Hey, what's up, guys? Pete here. Just want to give an update real quick on this call flood where a lot of us are doing for demo. Uh, I woke up later. I, I uh, had stayed up late doing some stuff, but uh, got online, checked this call flood, and saw that it had already been posted that his uh, motion uh, that Brandon had submitted that a lot of us were going to call on behalf of had been denied already. So I called uh, myself just a minute ago and was, in fact, told that uh, motion to extend time for judgment notwithstanding the verdict for a new trial and a stay sentence pending appeal. Right. That one was denied on the 31st. We got it stamped in on the 27th. It was denied on the 31st? Correct. Do we have any, uh, is there any reason given for that? An order went out to the parties in the case on the 31st. So if anybody would like to come in and review the file, they can. But you can't tell me over the phone. We don't read orders over the phone other than whether it was granted or denied. Is that... Interpretation. Right, but could you just read it verbatim, then there would be no interpretation, no. it would just be a fact? No, we don't read them over the phone. Is that... that seems not too, uh, customer service friendly, I guess, the way I'm looking at it. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, that's what we do. They said they couldn't go into any detail... They wouldn't expand on the rationale given or anything like that. I, and I try to point out, um, you know, how ridiculous that was. They try to, they claim to be public ser servants, uh, public officials, and yet they can't even disclose uh, why they acted in a certain way. Yeah, I was hoping to uh, speak with somebody about the uh, a release, the release of my friend who's caged up there in Valley Street Jail, um, pending a motion that was submitted on his behalf. Uh, his name, his name's Adam Miller. Okay, the young lady gave me the information, and I got the file, and our records are public, sir, and we don't read anything over the phone. What we could do is just say, you know, if an order is made, we indicate to the individual, even if there was an attorney involved, we would only indicate that, yes, we do have the file available, and you're more than welcome to come in. But, sir, we don't read anything over the phone. Okay, I guess then I have a question about that because, you know, it really it really doesn't bode, ma'am, if I can make a point, please, it really doesn't bode well for transparency and, you know, due to the fact that, and I should note that I'm... Are you an attorney, sir? Well, I should, let me let you know, too, I'm... And I'm sorry, if you're on a cell phone, I'm having a difficult time in indicating, but if you can hear me, please indicate... And know that these are public records. You're more than welcome to come in and review the file. It is available. And um, that's our, that's the policy of the court. All right. Hello? I mean, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, sir. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, I was told that I could go to their location, which was in New Hampshire, uh, to read it in person. But I said, you know, it's kind of cost prohibitive being that I'm in North Carolina right now but uh, anyway I mean it's kind of ridiculous I was uh, honestly I was a little uh, optimistic I guess about this because uh, it had pretty much put forth the motion put forth that uh, Michael Valentine messed up in charging a demo with a felony um, because the demo was a party to the calls uh, the follow-up calls that he made on October 4th, 2011, uh, um, in reference to the incident that Dar of Darren Murphy's uh, assault on Frank Harrington at Manchester's West High School the day prior. But uh, all three people that Damo talked to were public officials. He readily acknowledged that in trial on August 13th, and that was something continuously referenced by Michael Valentine. So per New Hampshire's, uh, the relevant statute he was charged under, 570A2, about wiretapping, um... You know, he should a demo uh, should not have been charged with felonies because he was a party to the calls. Uh, whereas the felony charge necessitates that everybody uh, that the person who did the wiretapping, quote unquote, uh, was not involved in the call at all for it to be a felony level. And if the person involved in the call uh, records it, then it it's a misdemeanor. So. Anyway, Damo right now, as a lot of us know, has been caged since uh, July 11th. Um, but from this, uh, the three felony wiretapping guilty charges he got, uh, he's been in there since August 13th. And uh, with good time, he should be out around October 11th. And if they d deny that, he'll be out around November 10th, um, after which he'll have the, the nine-month state hanging over his head for the current stent plus... Uh, 
one to three years for each of the other two felony wiretapping charges uh, per con good con good behavior conditions for the next five years. So those are some very onerous um, restrictions these folks have placed on a demo that I ho would have hoped the appeal, uh, the motion and the appeal uh, would address so that he can actually live his life uh, because we see how, you know, people get arrested for jaywalking. They get, uh, you know, some a lot of us know firsthand that sometimes folks with badges aren't the most uh, truthful and that charges, charge stacking does occur and char made up charges often are levied just as a way to harass people who question their actions. So to, to um, you know, know that right now a demo has these good behavior conditions over his head for five years, uh, you know, even if... Even uh, if he, uh, you know, quote unquote, walked the straight and narrow, he could still be picked up for something frivolous and or some some ridiculous thing made up towards him, and then all of a sudden he's in uh, a prison in Concord, New Hampshire, for years. So, uh, what I try to do when I do these call floods is really make make it known to the people on the other end of the phone, like, hey, you're not you're you're also culpable in the caging and the rights violations. Uh, being caused to and compounded uh, against my, a, a friend, a, a good person who uh, was looped into this only because he sought to hold another public official accountable, So, which was Darren Murphy again. So anyway, a ridiculous situation across the board from the start until now, and if you're not at all familiar with it, I encourage you to check out the post copblock.org slash free ademo, that's A-D-E-M-O, um, and you know, I guess call the court, let them know of your uh, your thoughts, let them know people are paying attention, uh, contact the local media, there's a couple links on the uh, event here for WMUR, which is Manchester-based TV station, as well as the Union Leader, which is the largest circulated paper in New Hampshire, um, you know, or hit up even some of the bigger mainstream media outlets, we have links at, at the copblock.org slash free demo page. And unsurprisingly, you know, around his when he this went to trial, uh, he got a demo's uh, story got picked up by a lot of big media um, like WikiLinks, uh, Huffington Post, CNN. Um, I don't know the SourceFed, Young Turks, some of their outlets. But uh, I mean, all the demo was doing was striving for accountability for these folks. And if you know if someone gets thrown in a cage for trying to hold a public official, someone who reports to be a public official accountable, then that really sets a bad precedent. And if, you know, if we allow for that to happen, if we just sit back while that's happening to somebody, then it doesn't really set the stage for a good society. And it means a lot other of us who act likewise, who believe that badges don't grant extra rights or that somebody... Um, or we, the fact that we might know that nobody has a right to steal from us, even if they call it taxation, then um, it, you know, it doesn't set the stage for a good situation. If uh, folks like Adamo and other people speak it out, you know, Bradley Manning, Julian Assange have been targeted for this. Um, but anyway, I appreciate everybody's support of Adamo. Feel free to write him. Uh, his address is at cop. <clears throat> excuse me. His address is at coplock.org/freeadamo. Um, and if you're in the Manchester, New Hampshire area, you can get in-person visits uh, every Saturday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., but you need to show up uh, no later than 6.10 p.m. So, uh, he's doing all right. So, um, I know he really appreciates hearing from folks, and uh, even more than that, I know he appreciates knowing that other folks are standing up for what they know is right. Uh, so, stuff like this is a lot less likely to happen going forward, so... Anyway, appreciate your time. Talk to you later. Peace.